Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at Primal Gruul, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck features a few of the new Mystical Archive cards, including Stone Rain, the 3 mana land destruction spell, and Primal Command, a 5 mana sorcery that lets us choose two modes between a target player gain 7 life, we can put target non-creature permanent on top of its owner's library, that also includes lands, so we can potentially use this as land destruction, target player shuffles their graveyard into their library, so it can potentially act as graveyard graveyard hate, or we can search our library for a creature card, reveal it and put it into our hand, and we've got a nice selection of one-offs to potentially search up with Primal Command, including Elder Gargroth, the 5 mana 6 6 beast with Vigilance Reach and Trample, and whenever Gargroth attacks or blocks we can either make a 3 3 beast, gain 3 life or draw a card. We also have Glorybringer, the 5 mana 4 4 dragon with flying and haste, and when Glorybringer attacks we can decide to exert it, in which case it deals 4 damage to target a non-dragon creature an opponent controls, and it doesn't untap during its next untap step. And then at 6 mana we've got a 1 of Vorinclex, a monstrous raider, the 6 6 legendary Phyrexian with trample and haste, and if we would put 1 or more counters on a permanent or player, we can put twice that many counters on that permanent or player instead, so great in combination with our planeswalkers like Chandra, which we can then play and ultimate right away, and also very nice with our saga here, the Waking the Trolls, which will take up to the second chapter right away. And then it also halves the number of counters the opponent gets on their permanence, so great against opposing planeswalkers and plus one counter synergies. And then we also have a one of Kogla, the Titan Ape, 6 mana 7 6 legendary ape, and when Kogla enters a battlefield we can fight up to one target creature we don't control, and whenever Kogla attacks we can destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls, so it gives us some artifact and enchantment removal. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got some acceleration, thanks to Lenor Elves, setting up a potential turn 2 stone rain, especially effective when on the play. And then we also have the full play set of Abundant Harvest as another mystical archive card, a 1 mana sorcery that lets us choose a land or non-land, and then we reveal cards from the top of our library until we reveal a card of the chosen kind and put it into our hand, so great for helping us hit our land drops early and finding more action spells late. And then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Emergent Sequence as our ramp spell of choice, and the reason we're playing this over a ramp artifact like Mindstone, or a slightly safer creature like Paradise Druid, is that this actually puts an extra land into play, which is very synergistic with our Waking the Trolls, which will then be able to make more troll tokens, and the plus one counters from Emergent Sequence can also synergize with our Vorinclex. And then we can also potentially stomp for 2 mana, dealing 2 damage to any target, and then play a 4-3 Bonecrusher Giant afterwards. And then at 3 mana, besides the full playset of Stone Rain, 2 copies of Cultivate for extra ramp, great for ramping into or waking the trolls and have extra lands in play. And then 2 copies of Clothus, God of Destiny, the 3 mana 4-5 legendary enchantment creature god that's indestructible, but it only turns into a creature if our devotion to red and green is at least 7, including the 2 devotion Clothus provides. And at the beginning of our pre combat main phase, we can exile target card from a graveyard, if it was a land card we can add a red or green to our mana pool, otherwise we gain 2 life and Clothus deals 2 damage to each opponent, so acts as graveyard hate, can also help us ramp, especially after we destroy some of the opponent's lands with stone rain, so the lands end up in the graveyard, and just a great card in general, can even search it up with our primal command as a creature. And then at 4 mana we've got the full playset of Chandra, Torch of Defiance, great if we can ramp into it, minus 3 dealing 4 damage to the opponent's only creature, and then have an active Planeswalker in play that can help us ramp, adding double red to our mana pool with the plus 1, or provide card advantage by exiling the top card of our library that we can cast that card, and if we don't, Chandra deals 2 damage to each opponent, and then the minus 7 ultimate is also game winning, especially nice with our Vorinclex. And then last but not least we've got 2 copies of Waking the Trolls, a 6 mana enchantment saga that on the first chapter destroys target land, on the second chapter we can put target land card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control, and on the third and final chapter we choose target opponent, if they control fewer lands than we do, we get to create a number of 4-4 green troll warrior creature tokens with trample equal to the difference, so that can also help us close out the game. And then going over the mana base we've got 4 stomping grounds, 2 rootbound crags, 
to slumber mounts as additional mana sinks to destroy an opposing land and generate a 4-4 troll token, 4 of the red-green pathway, 7 basic forests and 4 basic mountains. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a very nice opening hand, turn 1 elf, turn 2 stone rain. Although I guess we'll need to find an untapped land since slumber mount comes into play tapped. Still definitely keep. Can always abundant harvest to find more lands. Opponent playing an elf deck, probably not a great matchup for us, but we do get to stone rain at least. And they didn't have their own Lenor elves. Ooh, we drew the mountain, that's a huge draw. Play Chandra. No real need to kill Shepard, so we'll just plus here. Deal two damage to them. And then next turn we can Primal Command, bounce their land. Shepard goes after Chandra. So they're not playing a Lord here. Opponent just passes. Picked up another Chandra. Well, let's add some mana. Primal Commands, putting their land back. And then we want to search for a powerful creature. And which creature is that going to be? Glorybringer is pretty good. Putting flashes and a Wildborn Preserver, fair enough. So Glorybringer could be good. Gargroth, Kogla. Those are all reasonable. Vorinclex too. I guess Vorinclex has a bit of synergy here stopping the Preserver, although I don't know if that matters too much. I think I like Kogla, just get a removal spell and a big board presence all at once. And then I could Abundant Harvest, but I don't think that's necessary. I would rather have my Elf on defense. I guess we'll need another green source to play Kogla if we trade for the Elf. So I guess we won't do that. Yeah, we'll just let Chandra take three. Uh, we drew the forest anyway, but that's fine. So we can add some mana. Play Kogla. Find a War Master. And we'll Abundant Harvest for non-land. Next turn we can also Slumber Mount to destroy a forest. Or a Castle Garenbrick, even better. Elvish Archdruids, we definitely want to destroy if we get the chance. And we get the chance, so... Embarrassment of Riches here. I could minus Chandra, then play backup Chandra, plus and then still Stomp. I kind of like that sequence. Is that what we want to do? Or we could Slumber Mount if I use Chandra's mana ability. But then I won't be able to Stomp the Archdruids. So, Collected Company is kind of the card I'm worried about. Yeah, I think we'll just uh, kill some creatures here. Feel the burn. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. No one or two mana ramp, but still turn three stone rain. And then do we want to abundant harvests? I guess for a non land. Could have also waited a turn or two to get a bit more information. But we've got to cultivate, so we should have all the lands we need. Turn one healer's hawk. We could stomp. I'll probably take the one and see if they have a more threatening creature we need to stomp. Another hawk. Well, I guess we'll stomp the hawk now. And a Leon and Vanguard. Let's turn rain. And then if we draw land for Chandra, great. If not, we'll cultivate. 
Pride Mate. That's the card I would have liked to stomp, but our opponent played around our removal here. Probably gonna have to sacrifice our Chandra to kill Pride Mate before it gets out of hand. So not an ideal start. We're gonna lose our Planeswalker and it's gonna take us a while to get up to six mana. Whatever. Figure it out on your own. So I could cultivate. It's just probably needed if we want to guarantee six mana. But we do get to stabilize with Kogla, and then Waking the Trolls should close out the game for us. And our opponent has been stuck on two lands this entire time, so the Stone Rain has been effective. Third Vanguard. And that's fine. Alrighty, so time to wake the trolls. We'll keep Kogla on defense. And a Voring Clex, a nice one too. So don't need to get too aggressive here, but I guess we can afford to send the two big ones. And then next turn we're gonna get quite a few trolls. We have 10 lands in play to our opponent's one. Opponent goes back up to two. They could trade Vanguard for Mountain if they wanted to. And we get to untap. And that's a lot of trolls. Now we can send a team. Opponent takes it. Alright, let's see how they get out of this. Soul Warden, a bit late to the party. And our opponent explodes, sweet. Close one here against the life gain deck, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, we've got the elf into turn 2 stone rain on the play this time, so... Definitely keeping, and then our opponent will need some 1-mana interaction. We get to ramp into primal command, which can bounce another land, find one of our heavy hitters. And let's see what we're up against. A knight deck. Another stone rain, brutal draw. Although knight aggro deck might have a relatively low curve, so they might not need a ton of mana to work with. Sam Blood Crypts. He's gonna get destroyed as well. And then we'll just name land with harvest so we can primal command next turn. Well, I guess slumber mount's the one exception. And I'll just storm the knight now. Well, this game is shaping up to be pretty one-sided. Get to Primal Commands, bounce their lands, find maybe a Glorybringer or Kogla. And then we still have Slumber Mount as another way to destroy a land. Swordmaster for two. Oof. And let's go with. I guess Glorybringer's fine. 
Don't really want to trade. Inspiring veteran, tasty snack for a glory bringer. So now I would be fine with a trade, but opponent stays back. This will give us repeatable removal. Can primal command again next turn. Yeah, I'll take two now. So can we cultivate plus primal commands? Gonna be one short. So then we'll just primal command and search another creature. And how about a Kogla this time? Alright, Maul the Skyclaves. Still not going to be good enough once we exert Glorybringer. So we're going to equip the Swordmaster, which makes sense. So I can Kogla, fight the Midnight Reaper first, and then exert Glorybringer. And Kogla. Also happens to destroy them all. And next turn we can activate Slumber Mound. A second Maul. Still gonna be forced to chump here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is not amazing. A uh, few too many six drops. If we draw third land we can cultivate, but then we're still pretty far from waking the trolls. I'm afraid we'll have to mulligan. This is much better. Elf into turn two stone rain. Got a bone crusher for interaction, so probably get rid of one elf since it's not going to be incredibly useful after turn one. Soul Warden is fine. Can stomp that next turn or get Clothus in play. Gergroth, alright, so Clothus can ramp us into Gergroth next turn. So we're not a true land destruction deck in the sense that we're gonna necessarily keep the opponent on zero lands for the rest of the game, but it is a way to keep the opponent off balance. Although, as I say that, we drew another Stone Rain. So we could destroy the Black White Source and prevent them from casting the three mana angel with bishop in play, which would make even more angels. Or I can get Gergroth in play first. Close decision. I guess we could stone rain plus stomp a soul warden, but the other soul warden would still gain five to trigger the angel. So we might be better off just playing the Gergroth and then hoping they don't have the three mana angel for a turn. since we need to make some forward progress. They have the third land, luckily it's a Righteous Valkyrie instead of the other angel, still enough to pump their creatures by two. So we have double stomp here, so if Gergroth attacks we can get the opponent below 26 and punish them. And then we probably draw a card here, or we could make a beast. Although that will gain more life with the Soul Warden. So we'll draw a card instead. Oh, 
opponent takes it. So now we could double stomp any of their creatures at instant speed. Or we could stun rain the godless shrine. Close call. I think we need to double stomp here. And we'll wait and see what they play to decide. Veto. Alright, so they're just gonna try and kill us with life gain. So I probably killed the Righteous Valkyrie then. Would have been nice to destroy the Black Source before they played Vito, of course. They are also playing green for a collected company, so we can destroy that instead. And then Gargroth still has a good attack. And then we'll probably keep drawing cards. Now we could Primal Commands. Although if they have a company in hand, Primal Command is not an effective way to prevent them from casting it, so it would probably be better off just casting the Stone Rain. Youthful Valkyrie is okay. And then Primal Command can try and find an answer for Vito, which is kind of the only threat at the moment. Could also exile or stone rain. Do we need extra mana? I guess not really. So let's primal command. And then could also decide to gain seven. Or we could put the land back. I guess we'll put the land back. And then search for a creature. This basically eats the opponent's next draw step. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not the most exciting hand, but still keepable. Harvest probably for a non-land, since we have two ramp spells in hand. Stone Rain's nice. Alright, so we've got some more action now. Opponent brainstorming on turn one, not something you see very often. Opponent blue-white, maybe a control deck. Alright, next turn we can potentially Stone Rain or develop our own mana with Cultivate. I think I like Stone Raining. Might get countered, that's fine. And we'll hit for two. Could already Primal Command. Although we could play around Sensor by waiting for six mana. And then cultivating first. Ooh, Chandra's great, and plays around sensor. It's just gonna get memory lapsed. Timely Reinforcements makes three tokens, although it didn't gain any life. Well, we can replay Chandra, might get Memory Lapsed again, so be it. Does not. Let's do this. So we could add mana, stomp one of the tokens, we could add mana, cultivate, which I also don't mind, even though Chandra takes a bit of a hit. And then next turn we'll be able to get more stuff done. And 
and then primal command can maybe get a Vorinclex, which also stops opposing planeswalkers from entering with a lot of loyalty. Opponent going face. So they must have another answer for Chandra. Conquer's death. Kogla can destroy the saga. Guess you don't need me anymore. And take out a token. And then I think I want Abundant Harvest now, instead of hitting for two. Could see a Sweeper next turn as well. Right, Stone Rain's still useful. Although this is going to cost us more. So probably just a Wrath of God incoming. Alright, we can still Primal Command for 7 mana. And then put a land back. They don't have anything to get back with Conqueror's Death at least. And then... Could also decide to shuffle the opponent's graveyard back, but I didn't think we want to do that. And then find a creature. And then we'll put back either Temple or Hallowed Fountain. Let's go with the Temple. And then what do we want? I'm guessing Vorinclex. Clothus could also be decent. Since it's not as easily answered. But Vorinclex is pretty hard and shuts down Sagas and Planeswalkers. Gargroth is a decent follow-up. Do we want to play that before Vorinclex? Still can double spell with Stone Rain, so I think we wait. No counter spell, but they might have another Wrath. And a Brainstorm. Although they haven't shown many shuffle effects or ways to take advantage of Brainstorm. So if our opponent plays a land and we draw a land, we want a Stone Rain first, so they cannot counter the Gergroth. Alright, we drew the land, still find Stone Raining and playing Gergroth, since I don't want to overextend into another Sweeper. Opponent seems to have another Brainstorm in hand. Another Timely, with the life and the tokens this time. Although Gargroth tramples. We're just gonna start drawing cards. Kind of like keeping my Bone Crusher around to maybe finish off a Planeswalker that minus. So I'm gonna hold that one back. And then we need something like Clothus to help us close out the game. Maybe Waking the Trolls. Hmm, not sure about this attack since it would trigger Gergroth, so our opponent stays back. We will attack. Do I stomp a token if our opponent double blocks it? We'll see. It's not unreasonable, but I'm still afraid of a Planeswalker here, and since they triple blocked now, never mind. Well, we've been able to dodge a big card draw effect from the opponent, so hopefully that stays true for another turn. Opponent passes. Glorybringer's not bad. Might prompt a counter spell, and then if we hit them, Bone Crusher's still lethal. Do have to watch out for Subtle Revenge, I suppose. Mm, 
So I don't have to attack with a glory bringer. I guess that's reasonable. Just send a Gergroth and then Bone Crusher still lethal at any point. Alright, our opponent takes it. No need to stomp right now. We're going to wait for the opponent to tap out. Opponent does nothing. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so a bit of a strange build of blue-white control with a lot of anti-aggro cards, but they couldn't find our planeswalkers for card advantage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, but we do have the turn to Stone Rain thanks to Lenor Elves, so we'll try it. Gotta hope they don't run out a powerful 1 or 2 drop. Soul Warden is pretty annoying. But if they're playing a life gain deck outside of a Janny's Pride Mate, there's not too many impactful 2 drops. And then we can prevent them from casting a more expensive card for quite some time. So we'll Stone Rain, next turn probably Stone Rain again. And try to keep them on a low land count, and then we need to find one of our heavy hitting creatures, and Kogla will certainly do. So let's Stone Rain again, opponent missed their land drops, so they're not gonna like this. And then Abundant Harvest probably finds a non-land since we have Cultivate. To hit our land drops, another Stone Rain revealed. Yeah, opponent's probably not gonna cast another spell this game. So, there's nothing to destroy with Stone Rain. So we'll just cultivate, ramp into Kogla, and our opponent scoops it up. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. No elf or growth to a ramp into Chandra, but still a Stone Rain into Chandra, hopefully. Although well, discard spell might mess with our plans. Alright, there's Elf, turn late. Maybe our opponent was holding the Thought Seize. Nope, goes for Knight. And the Swordmaster. Don't have double red for Chandra. So we could Stone Rain or we could Cultivate. I don't mind cultivating, since that way we kind of set ourselves up to potentially Chandra and Stone Rain in the same turn. We'll take the one. And Drillbit gonna have a look. Both Chandra and Primal Command high value targets. Takes a Chandra. Swordmaster's fine. Another Stone Rain? Well, double Stone Rain sounds appealing. And then hopefully they don't have another discard spell for command. Can chain together primal command. So we'll bounce their lands, search a creature. And what creature do we get? I'm liking Kogla, I'm liking Glorybringer. Let's go with Kogla. Don't really need to trade for the Swordmaster, so we'll attack with Elves. We could Primal Command again, but I think I want to get Kogla in play now. Murder Strider takes care of Kogla. So 
and now we could primal commands, even get a Colossus and play Colossus right away. Still like bouncing their tapped land. Could also go for a glory bringer. Although Clothus is much more difficult for the mono black deck to answer. So maybe that's the pick. And then Awaking the Trolls would be a great finisher to draw. Chandra is nice too. So I could Chandra and then plus. Fine Bone Crusher, perfect. Stomp the Swordmaster. And now we have an active Chandra. Although another Murder Strider are gonna take care of her. This is a waste of my time. Fine with the trade, we lose a Devotion, but makes the board a bit more stable. So Waking the Trolls would be our best draw by far. Maybe should have kept an Unknown in hand in case her point fires off another discard spell. Well, there's Waking the Trolls. So I imagine this is game. Unless he point has a Sweeper. So Clothus exiles Hagar Mauling, Waking Trolls get Swamp. And play land so we get more trolls. And Grey Merchants, alright, that drains us for quite a bit. So are we dead to another Grey Merchant here? Six, seven, eight, not quite. And next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Well, there's a second Grey Merchant. So I guess they're up to 27 now. So the Trolls will force a Chum Block. Wins at one. All right, I guess we die to a third gray merchant here. Now we can gain life with Gargroth. And our opponent's going to go out on their own terms by activating Castle Lothwain. So it ended up being a pretty close game here, thanks to those Grey Merchants in the end. But Primal Gruul comes out on top. So yeah, Primal Gruul, a fun mid rangey land destruction deck in Historic, can sometimes get quick wins thanks to an early Stone Rain, but can also play longer grindy games where we get to see the full deck in action. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.